Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 40 of Pastor Mike's Quick Shots, and I hope uh, that you will uh, be intent and listening. I know I had to blame my wife because she put the one snow shovel away, and so April 21st, we wake up with inches of snow on the ground, obviously, right? That's nobody's fault. That's just God being funny. (laughs) <laughs> Friends, I hope that uh, your week has been going well, and I hope that you've been thinking about what this spirit moving in you means, what community and being the church is beginning to look like and mean. And one of the things that we're going to talk about, we talked about it last week, it's on Sunday, we talked about faith, and having faith that God can do something is, is not a necessary thing to our faith. Faith is trust. Faith is believing that God can, even though you may or may not believe that it's a situation where he can. I mean, we have uh, many times, I think, as believers, we think that that healing should happen instantly because we are believers, right? I believe in Jesus, so therefore I should be instantly healed from whatever it is that my ailment is. I know that uh, we've been praying for Ryan Strunk and uh, his situation and Ryan's home. Just a few weeks, if not days after uh, having a stroke and draining a brain bleed, Ryan is home. Um, And I don't feel like everyone gets that opportunity. And so how does God pick and choose who to heal and who not to heal? I don't think that's really up to us. I go back to go back to the book of John when the, the disciples were having this discussion and we still have the same discussion amongst ourselves now all the time. Uh, what caused this man to be born blind, they said. Was it his sin or was it his mother's sin? So they're in a, a state of theological newness where they believe, still believe that, that sin is what caused the blindness, which that's not the case. Jesus is trying to help them and talk to them. And here in John 9, verses 1 through 7, he says this. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground. He made mud with saliva, spread it over the blind man's eyes. And he told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means scent. And so the man went and washed and came back seeing. See, our society tells us that somebody has to be at blame. We have to blame somebody for that man's blindness. We have to blame someone for Ryan's stroke. We have to blame someone for the cancer that that took our loved one away from us. We have to put a blame. There's a blame game that needs to be played. And however we want to do that, unfortunately, that ends up hurting other people and hurting ourselves, and no one really wins. So Jesus didn't really answer the question, though, did he? Who sinned? I picked up um, a job for Jesus this week as part of my devotional set, and Pastor Anand Peacock and Circular Road Baptist Chapel uh, said this in this week's devotional. Who sinned? We want an answer for human suffering, and that answer is sin, but it's not always individual sin. Jesus' disciples are worried or believe that if something negative has happened to someone, it must be the result or a result of some individual sin. How different is it then from the law of karma? What they are asking is, is the kid, grown man now, being punished or are his parents being punished for something they've done? It is sad that in many Christian circles and churches, there is a spirit of judgmentalism. When we see people suffering, and virtually all of us have issues going on in our lives, our first reaction ought to be compassion, not judgment. How's that possible, you say? It's possible because once we look upon each other as children made in the image of God, 
regardless of our circumstance, regardless of our poor life choices, regardless of what our, our, our life has brought to us, we are all in this together. We're all in the same boat. We're all children falling short of the glory of God, as Paul would tell us. And so therefore, we deserve compassion. We deserve empathy and love, not judgment. But it's so easy for us to be judgmental people. I thought of uh, one of the pieces that came to my mind was in 2 Kings when uh, Naaman, Naaman was a, a leader and, 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 you know, a powerful person who ended up with leprosy. And, and he went to Elisha thinking that Elisha could just make it go away. But Elisha doesn't just make it go away. Instead, he, he tells him how to basically heal himself. And he just doesn't like the way the circumstances are. How many times does that sound like us? Listen to this from 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. But Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. And then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. But Naaman became angry and stalked away. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of his, the Lord his God and heal me. Aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Parfar, or the Farpar better than any of the rivers of Israel? Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned away in rage. How many times do we want the, the cancer to be healed? And we want somebody to wave a magic wand over it and heal it. But that, in a sense, is not what heals us. I, I feel as though we, we take healing. Um, we want God to heal us from the inconvenience of the, of the, of the insert thing here whether it's uh, alcoholism, whether it's drug addiction, whether it's cancer, whether it's COVID, we want to insert thing here and have God wave a magic wand over it and make it all go away. That is not the healing, unfortunately, that Jesus came to die for. Jesus came to heal the blind, not the physically blind, the spiritually blind. He came to heal the sick, not the physically sick, the spiritually sick. Jesus came, lived, died, and rose from the grave so that we would not have to spend an eternity in, in hell and in exile, that we would be one with our God, that we would have the, the Holy Spirit at our disposal, and that we would be able to have a vibrant life that we can live beyond this broken old vessel. Pastor Anand Peacock uh, finished up the, the text and finished up the devotion this way. You may have great faith and yet remain unhealed. The Apostle Paul, who healed many people and even raised some from the dead, speaks about this when he mentions a, quote, thorn in the flesh. God an God's answer to Paul ought to be the balm in our lives. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Because my power is made perfect in weakness. When we are at the end of our rope, when we don't have anything else to grab onto, that's where we look for God. If he knows this about us, why would he not let the, the normal things of this world, snowing in April, cancer in our best friend, heart attacks, these things. Why would the physical ailments and the physical trouble of this world not be a tool that he could use to bring us to himself? He's looking for so much more than temporary happiness. And not only is he looking for your temporary happiness to go to an eternal situation, but then once you've experienced that happiness that goes eternal, he's wanting you then to share that with someone else who's going through the same thing. That's the healing that he's looking for. That's the faith that he's looking for. Friends, I hope that you are holding on. I hope that you are finding community and finding church as a place not where, uh, not where we, we, we get to, 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 to have a spiritual interaction, but to where we get to meet each other 
and we get to rely on each other and care for each other because that is the early church. There were no eloquent messages. There were no grand preaching sermons. These were lives that were shared in community together. Friends, I hope that you'll join us as we continue the discussion. We're going to talk about becoming church and what healing means and how it means to heal. And then we're going to talk about uh, leading into May, we're going to continue this. We're going to talk about our testimony, what our testimony means to other people of faith. And we're going to go all the way up to Ascension Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, and then Trinity Sunday. So we're going to have a lot of, a lot of things to do to get to where we're going and uh, finding out what this church is supposed to look like. Friends, I hope that you'll join us uh, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. in Maplewood, 1030 a.m. in DeGraff. And if you can't, you can always join us online. Friends, would you join me in this closing prayer? Our Father, who reached down from heaven with such love, may we not miss the joy in the gift of our living. May our hearts find gladness in the days you have given us. And may we grasp with open hands the opportunities for a life abundant that you give to us. Amen. That prayer was from Taryn Pena. Uh, of Tear Fund, and I hope and I pray that that prayer blessed you. And I hope, friends, that you have a great rest of your week and you look for ways to help yourself heal, including healing others. Have a great week. Bye. <laughs> have a great week, everybody. You got to stay to the end. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. <laughs>